Hey YouTube, Mike here, coming to you with an instructional video on how we build a real wide gate, wooden gate, that will not sag, guaranteed. And the reason it won't sag is because it's not really a wooden gate. It is a steel tube frame gate clad with wooden pickets. So on one side, it looks like a wooden fence, but from the back side, you can see a steel tube frame. It's gonna go right in between this span here, 14 foot, four inches. We figure that's gonna be plenty big enough or, uh, you know, we might wanna get this car carrier through there. It's pretty wide, maybe a dump truck. You never know what might go through here. Now, this is a real wide span. So that is why we're going with a steel tube frame and it will never sag. Well, maybe the posts might uh, warp and bend over a little bit, but we went by, we went with uh, six by six posts and uh, hopefully that won't happen. Stay tuned. Let's get to work. All right, let's talk a little bit about materials. Normally I would make this gate out of uh, one inch square 16 gauge. I've built a few of them that way, but, uh, and I've done it out of galvanized. But in this case, uh, well, previously I was building those for a residential home and I wanted it to look nice. In this, and I wanted it to be real light, but in this case, I found some real cheap material and it's way overkill, but we're doing it over at a warehouse, so it doesn't really matter. And it'll be heavy duty, so, you know, it'll last forever. I found these uh, 10 gauge, one and a half inch square tubes. Let's see how long it is. So this is what we're gonna build our steel frame out of. Next step is we gotta go figure out the size. So let's lay that out on the computer. All right, so here's what we got. Uh, I use solid works, but you can do this with pencil and paper just as easy. But I use this every day. So we've got a, a span that's gonna be 14 feet, four inches. And uh, this is gonna be our layout. We're gonna put a diagonal across the middle. So we're just gonna build one side first. That way we make sure the other side is gonna be exactly the right length. Cause I'm not exactly sure right now what kind of latch I'm gonna put in here. So we're gonna build one side and this is gonna be our layout. And I've got kind of uh, an interesting hinge that we're gonna use right here. And I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, this is what we're gonna do for a hinge. Uh, we're gonna use a, a gigantic lag bolt. It's gonna go into our, our gate post. And then, we are gonna weld this big barrel nut right there like that. This 5H bolt, we're gonna drill a hole in our tubing right here. And this is gonna be our hinge. This bolt is gonna be the axle for our hinge. And we're gonna screw it right down into the top of this barrel nut. So the tubing's gonna sit here like this, and then we'll have some adjustment. So we can adjust the bolt up and down a little bit. That could, that'll adjust our gate. We can rotate the lag bolt in and out of the post, and that'll give us some adjustment there. So pretty simple solution and real heavy duty. All right, we're gonna punch a hole 7 16 from the end of the tube, 0.4375. We'll mark it with our calipers. Set it at about three quarters, maybe 0.8. And uh, try to get center. Looks pretty good. All right, so now let's punch us a center point in there so our drill bit don't walk around. This is kind of by eye, and I need a, a, a real prick punch, but the spring's busted in my prick punch, so I'm just going to use this punch here. And try to get it by hand. That's a little off. Let's drive it over to the mark. I'm cheating a little bit here. That's all right. It'll work. We got our hole punched. Cheated a little bit, but we got it right in the middle. 
Put a little cutting oil on there. Because we've got a brand new bit and we want it to last. This material is uh, 0 0.140 inches thick, which is in between an eighth inch and three sixteenths. It's real thick. So I think what we're gonna do, normally I would put a piece of tube in here, round tube for a sleeve, for a bearing surface. But I do that when I use 16 gauge tubing, which uh, doesn't give you much thickness. I think 16 gauge is only a sixteenth of an inch. Whereas this is 10 gauge. So with two material thicknesses of 0 0.140, that's 0 0.280, spread out an inch and a half apart, I think that'll be plenty of bearing surface by itself. But if not, I do have some tubing I'll weld in there. But uh, let's just see how it goes. Let's put a little uh, lubricant on the other wall thickness. Again, just trying to make our bit last, cut a little faster. So if you guys are ever drilling something like this where it needs to be perfectly square and plumb, level and all that good stuff, here's a good way to do it. Get you another table and uh, put your hydraulic jack on it. You can level it right up. Works real good. Then I've got to see if I can find a bit the right diameter. That'll be the next challenge. All right, so uh, measuring up our bit with our calipers, it's coming in at about 0.615 at the biggest part of it on the shank there, the shaft. I got all these drill bits. They're all dull, but they're probably good enough to drill through that if I take my time. Unfortunately, the closest bit I got is about 0 .6, 0 0.57, excuse me, 0.57. That ain't big enough. But I got this stepper bit, and it's coming in at uh, 0.618. That's perfect. I actually kind of like these stepper bits, so I'll put me a piece of tape on here. So I'll make sure I stop at the right step. Seems like this bit might be pretty dull, too, just like all of them. Let's see what happens. Put our stepper bit in there. Something wrong with this drill press, it's a little bit wobbly, but good enough for what we're doing. All right. So we got all our pre-drilled tubes out here, pre-drilled with pilot holes. So let's stick it in here. See what kind of mess we can make. All right, here we go. So I uh, stopped drilling only because uh, I don't like to drill metal that fast. I think I had that set up for drilling some wood a while back. So let's see if we can slow this thing down a little bit. All right, I had to change the setup a little bit. I uh, didn't have the stroke long enough. So I had to raise the table up and likewise had to adjust our our, uh, our rear stop. Let's get back at it. Here's one more step to go. So let's see how we're looking on the diameter. That looks pretty good. Not perfect, but that yeah, actually is pretty perfect. All right, so we got one side drilled. Uh, Got to flip it over. You can only go down to the step, so. Flip the tubing over. I don't know if you can notice it, but I slowed the uh, RPM of the drill press down a little bit. Pretty good. All right, so uh, that's what we got. Got a little burr down inside there, but we'll take care of that. So we got a couple of chop saws here. That one's light, but it's a 10 inch. This one here is really heavy. And I don't really need two chop saws, but I thought, hey, if I wanna cut some steel, I'll go buy me an abrasive blade like this one, the Diablo, metal cutoff. 
I'm gonna put it on this old chop saw that I was thinking about selling. And uh, we'll see how it does cutting 10 gauge, one and a half inch square tube. It might struggle a little bit, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let's find out. All right, so we got our saw set up here and we've got 57 and a half inches measured off. So let's see how this abrasive Diablo blade works for us. Line it up with our mark. That looks good. Let's see what happens. Not too bad. By the way, if you have a, uh, a dust catcher bag like this, a homemade dust catcher bag made out of some Levi's. You try to cut metal with it, it'll catch on fire. So uh, make sure you don't do that. We've got our 57 and a half inch pieces cut here and here. We've got these two drilled top and bottom, top and bottom horizontal tubes. We've got them drilled, but we don't have them cut to length. Looks like 84 and 5 eighths, top and bottom. I'm gonna be careful, don't wanna cut the, the wrong end off. So anyway, here we go. Before we get started welding, we gotta lay all our tubes out and uh, try to hold them in place so that uh, the frame is square. So what I've done in the past is I made these fixtures. I got a bunch of them, four exactly, one for every corner. And normally I would put my tubing right inside these dado grooves and that holds it together real nice and you can weld it and weld right in here. But I already got these made. This frame is inch and a half. So I'm just gonna lay the tubing right inside here. I'm gonna clamp it in place with these. I got a bunch of these to clamp it in place with and we'll be good to go. Okay, this shows uh, all our tubes mounted into our fixtures with our clamps. Just pushed it right to the corners there and clamped it in, made it real simple. Then on this end, we needed an inch and a half from this edge over to the tube. This is where our hinge is gonna go, right in here. So, you know, we didn't wanna weld this right flush. We needed an exact inch and a half, which is uh, coincidentally the thickness of a two by four, inch and a half, so I got a nice spacer right there got a clamp on everything should be nice and square i'm gonna measure diagonally corner to corner bump it around with a hammer a little bit we'll get it perfect all right we're gonna do a little grinding first we're gonna grind a spot for our ground put it right here <laughs> All right, we've got all our corners ground down a little bit, just a little on the top so we can get it tacked. And uh, now it's time to do a little welding. All right, so now we're gonna cut our diagonal piece. And like I said, uh, I bought this tubing cheap off a guy that was just trying to get rid of it. That's why I'm using it. It's way overkill for what we're doing here. But, hey, it was cheap. So, if you can get it cheap, why not use it? So, anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, the tubing was only 7 foot long, and I need a piece about 8 foot to go corner to corner diagonal. As you can see here, uh, that's about as close as we can get. So, I'm just going to mark it here. both ends we're going to use our handy dandy diablo abrasive blade on our chop saw and get her done so we got our diagonal brace cut to size got the angles cut on the ends here's what we ended up with looks pretty good both ends so now we got to grind it and weld it so 
So I showed you before about uh, how we're gonna do these hinges, but um, take a look here. Got a big lag bolt, got a barrel nut. We're gonna weld it right here. Okay, we're back at our work site where we've got our fence built with our gate posts mounted in the ground with concrete. These are big, six inch square. I don't know, overkill, who cares? Let's make it heavy duty. So anyway, here we go. Here's our welded together fence, or excuse me, our welded together gate panel, just one side only. I told you we was gonna do one side first. And then we can measure over and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drill some pilot holes top and bottom in our post for our handy dandy custom designed hinge mounts. So laying this out on the ground, we're gonna have one hinge here and we're gonna have the other hinge here. It's gonna be inside the top and the bottom tubing. That way uh, we can adjust the gate up and down just a little bit uh, with the bottom bolt that's gonna come up into this hinge mount. So looking at our uh, tape measure, center to center on the bolts is about 55 and a quarter. So I'm thinking maybe I better go 55 inches. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna run this bolt in using the impact. Cause running them in by hand ain't easy. So let's run this on in. So here's our hinge mount. You can see it screws in pretty good once you uh, run it in with the impact first. I'm gonna have to use a tool here when it gets a little farther down in there, but you can put your axle bolt in there, drop your uh, ratchet wrench on it. Easy peasy. Uh, figured it'd be a better idea to move the hinge point over a little closer to the back. That way, when the, uh, when the gate swings out, it can uh, go past 90 degrees. All right, so we moved our uh, hinge bolts over like we talked about. And uh, from the point here to the post, we've got exactly two inches. Top and bottom, we've got a little lubricant in there for the threads. And then, uh, like we did over when we were drilling the holes, we got us a hydraulic jack to get it level in the back or to lift it up to the right height so that the frame is level so we can drop this on here. I'm working alone, so, you know, normally I'd have somebody to lift that end up for me, but working alone, you got to do what you got to do. We're going to lift this end up, and we're going to set it right on top here. We're going to take this lag bolt that we were using earlier as a tap tap a thread inside here we're just going to drop it down through just to hold it because this this bolt is small enough just to drop through so there you go you got the bolt dropped in and uh down here at the bottom we're lined up almost perfect over there is our hydraulic jack floor jack let's see if we can do this one-handed Lined right up. Got lucky again. Let's 
try this in, see if we get lucky. Pull our alignment pin out. And drop our bolt in. Look at that. Perfect. There you go. That's how you do it with one hand and no help. Like I mentioned before, I just built one side first, went ahead and mounted it. The reason for that is so that I could come from this point right here and measure over to the other post and see if we came out to exactly 86 and 3 8, which we did not. We came up with 87 inches. So if I built this side the same as this one, which is 84 and 5 8, I wouldn't end up with this same gap right here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make this side a little bit longer. Instead of 84 and 5 eighths, we're gonna go with an even 85 inches. Got both uh, gate panels put up, as you can see. Now the ground here has a little rise going off to the left. So I mounted one higher than the other. But when we put our pickets on there, you know, they're gonna line up left to right or right to left, and you'll never know it. You'll just see it on the back side, which we're not gonna worry about that today. So anyway, you can see we got a little offset at the top and bottom, but got my level on there. First try, it came out perfectly level. So pretty happy with that. We were gonna invent our own uh, latching system, but I saw this at Lowe's. And I thought it was uh, pretty heavy duty. And uh, it's kind of nice. It's got the metals bent here so I can put, you know, I can put that sort of wrapped around the tubing. If this will be the right gate and this will be the left gate. And uh, just drop that in place when it closes. Got a hole here for a lock if we want to put a lock on it. Work out real good. So you're probably wondering how we're going to get these pickets mounted onto a steel frame. You're probably thinking, man, that's a lot of drilling. Drill all that steel for individual screws for every picket. But no, we're not going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple two by fours. We're going to split them right down the middle. We're gonna take this, these two by fours we split in half. We're gonna set them right on top, like this, top and bottom. And we'll chop this off right here with a chop saw. We'll mount our pickets on the front. And then on the back, we'll put a single picket on one end, and then we'll put a single picket on the other end. And that'll sandwich the steel tube frame in between the pickets. And then we can just screw right into the, the face of this, this inch and a half or so here. And that'll be plenty strong. Here's our latch welded in place. Now what's the beauty of uh, this kind of gate system is when I first put this back on here and I would latch it, this was kicked up kind of at an angle, which meant that the right side gate was too low. So all I had to do was take this bolt right here, this 5 8 bolt that's in our hinge mechanism. I just screwed it up higher, which lifted the whole gate up. So there's where the adjustment worked out already. And that allowed the gate latch to come all the way and bottom out perfectly level. So it's a real strong way to make a hinge and yet it's still adjustable. This tubing has a strange orange color on it. I think it was used uh, in shipping containers. And uh, with any project that involves welding, there's a potential for some corrosion at the welds. So we got a solution for that. We dug around and we found some Chevy orange. So man, I sure am glad that uh, this tubing wasn't blue.
So on each gate panel, we've got a, a picket, two pickets on the front, one on each end on both gate panels. You can see our wood uh, sandwich piece up on the top. And then on the ugly side, we've got a piece that's just running from the top of the sandwich board to the bottom of the sandwich board there. Got it on both ends. Chevy orange. And uh, yeah, so now we can go ahead and uh, put our pickets on. Now that we've got all our pickets on, as you can see, we're down to the last step. We're down to the short strokes. Every double gate has this same issue, and that is, you see here, the wind can blow this back and forth, opening and closing, sort of, moving back and forth. So, I'm gonna put a uh, removable post right here. Here's a plastic sleeve. Uh, it's actually a vinyl fence post, I believe. But it's a little bigger than a regular four x four. So that you can put a four x four down into it. We're gonna take this sleeve. We're gonna take the post hole diggers and dig a hole around in here somewhere. And then we'll drill some holes through the fence, put a bolt in it. That way we can use this side to come and go quickly and easily and uh and then the gate the gate won't rattle in the wind so much so actually that's not my idea i saw that on another youtube video so i'm stealing somebody else's idea but hey that's what it's all about you watch youtube you get good ideas and then you use them Here we drilled our hole through the top. You can see uh, we went through the wood and not through the metal. Uh, you know, why not do it the easy way? Probably better to go through the metal, but if there's an issue later, I can always re-drill it and go through the metal. You can see we drilled all the way through here, through the top sandwich board, and we're, we drilled through our post. I found a piece of all thread in my junk box I'm gonna use that instead of a long bolt just because I had it already, you know? So let's see if we can get this to line up. There we go. A little bit long, but that's all right. We'll cut it off with a hacksaw. And on this end, we just bent it over. It's temporary, you know? We gotta make a run to Lowe's or Home Depot and get the right length bolt. But you know what? We might just use this. So I'm gonna run the nut down on there and that'll make it nice and solid so we can drill through the bottom. That's our next step. Well, now that we got the gate pretty much done, there's nothing left to do but ride on it and test the strength. Let's see what happens. All right, so just to take a look at uh, the finished product, got our bolts in the top, got our bolts in the bottom, got some dirt packed around the bottom. That'll get more solid as time goes on. Now this latch has a little slack in it. I don't really like that, but eh, maybe if the lock's in there, it'll work better. Showing you this view so you can see how, uh, despite the fact that the frames had to be offset because the ground was higher on one end than the other, 
we just lined up the picket straight across. We pulled a uh, string across the top and just kept them even with that. So there you go, nice and straight. So if you stayed all the way through the video, thanks a lot. Uh, I hope it was informational. As you can tell from uh, everything that happened, I'm not a professional. I don't have the best tools in the world, but it's a lot of fun to me. You know, it makes you feel good to do a project like that yourself and uh, you can do it your way. Not always the best, but in this case, I think it's good enough. Again, thanks for watching.